related rates is uh, problems with re related rates. They tell you about, it discusses the relationships between changing quantities. For example, uh, if you take a cylindrical shaped container and you fill it up at a constant rate, if you pour, if you add volume at a constant rate, uh, you would expect that the height or the depth of the fluid would be changing at a constant rate as well. That's just common sense. Uh, the mathematical way to show that is to figure out the relationship between the volume and the depth, which is this, which is the volume of the cylinder, and to differentiate it with respect to time. As, the volume as time changes, the volume changes, and as the volume changes, h changes. So indirectly, uh, h is also a function of time and can be differentiated with respect to time. So here's the relationship, and you differentiate, you get dv dt equals, since the radius of the container is fixed and r squared is a constant, and you'll just get pi r squared uh, dh dt. And this is a mathematical way to show that if one is constant, the other is also constant, because if dv dt is fixed, if it's some number, say three cubic inches per second, if you divide that by pi and divide by the square of, of the radius, you will get the rate of change of the depth, and it's going to be constant as we uh, had anticipated. That's not so with something a little more complicated like a cone. Uh, if you're, uh, say that you're filling up a cone at a constant rate, meaning that you're adding volume at a constant rate. So uh, uh, the rate of change of the depth is going to be, it's not going to be constant because you're taking up a little less volume here than you are here. So it's going to appear to fill up quickly and then more slowly as it gets wider. Uh, the relationship between the volume and the radius of the, of the um, fluid and the height of the fluid is more complicated. And since both R and H are functions of time, the differential expression is definitely much more complicated. These R's and H's in here, seeing how they vary as the thing fills up, the, this is what says, uh, this is what binds the rate of change of the volume with the R and the H. Unlike over here, where R was fixed, um, there, was, there were no other, other variables. The rate of change of the, of the, of the, the uh, depth is independent of how deep it is or how much is, is in there. That's why there are no V's or H's popped up in here. So for the first uh, related rates problem is a classic, it's the oil spill problem. There's an oil spill in the middle of the ocean, and so here's like a tanker here, all right, tanker, tanker ruptures and it spills out oil that expands in a, in a circular pattern. And we'll say that the area of the spill is increasing at a constant rate of 40 square meters per hour. And the question asks, how fast is the radius changing when the area is 100 square meters? So as the area increases, so does the radius of the, of the uh, spill. You have to kind of symbolize what we need here. Um, you have to interpret this information and put it in calculus form. When we say that the rate of change of area is 40 square meters, that's dA dt. And when they ask how fast is the radius changing, they, they want to know what is dr dt. And they want to know when it's uh, 100 square meters, so they give you this. And they want to know what is the rate of change of uh, the radius at area equals 100. Once you have, once you have a picture drawn and mapped out uh, in math terms what they gave you and what you want, you have to find a way to connect them. So what connects uh, A and R, if you're dealing with a circle, is area, pi r squared, where both A and R are functions of t, time. Uh, to figure out the relationship, you differentiate with respect to time, dA dt is 2 pi r, dr dt. Now notice, again, this is not as simple as the cylindrical container example. This says that the rate of change of the area, even if it is constant, it depends on what the, the radius is. Okay, so that is to say that 
say that you have a circle that's expanding at a constant rate. You have a small circle, and you change, all, and you um, say that you change uh, the, the radius by a little bit. You gain so much area, all right? But the lar this says that the larger r is, the more area will be gained. Which is to say that if you have a large circle, already large, with a big R, and you in increase R by a little bit, you gain much more area. That's the relationship that is symbolized here. Anyway, once you figure out what the equation is, uh, when you have differentiated it, basically you just have to plug things in. Um, they gave you what dA dt was, that's 40, and they want to know what is it when the area is 100 square meters. So you get to ask yourself, when the area is 100 square meters, what's R? Because we need the A, uh, R is what we need to know. So then you go back to the formula, pi r squared, and figure out what is R if A is 100. A is 100, pi r squared, and you wind up getting R equals uh, 10 over radical pi. So take that plug it in. Since they want, uh, we ultimately want dr dt, we may as well solve for it here and you get dr dt equals uh, 1 over 2 pi r dt. Which shows that the rate of change of the radius, again, is like inversely proportional to, to um, whatever r is. As r increases, the rate of change of the radius is going to decrease. But you just substitute every, everything in, uh, make r this, make a 100, uh, um, I'm sorry, dA dt will be 40, and you get 1 over 2 pi times 10 over radical pi times 40, which turns out to be, uh, it'll be 2 over radical pi once you simplify. And the units will be meters per hour because the original thing that we started with was uh, A was measured in square meters. So R is measured in meters. So that's how you know. You trace back to what the original uh, units were. So this would be 2 meters per hour. 